Welcome to 2019. Can you believe it? Do you remember when it was way back in 2000 at the turn of the century? Of course, that's when, you see, back then a lot of people were saying, oh, it's the end of the world, right? That whole kind of thing. And we, we all think we know better. But now it's 2019 already. Can you believe it? And as, as I'm told and as I experience, the older I get, the faster the years go by. That's just the way it is. Do you know what I did last night? I bet you I did something that only maybe one or two other people did here this morning. I sat around a campfire outside. It was nice, right? Snow's coming. It, snow will come, but it was like, we got to take a picture, Brenda, of all this. This is kind of cool. We're sitting outside. We had our jackets on and the like, but it's, we're around the campfire in January. And that was just a, something I never expected to do in January, even here in Indiana. I want you to think back for a moment of 2000. 18. I, I hope you took opportunity to, to praise God for just the, the really good and great things that, that came your way in 2018. Uh, it, it's easy for us always to complain about what wasn't so good that we forget to say, to say thank you to God for the, for the good things he, he gave, even during the hard times. Those are often easy for us to remember. It's this other part of, of 2018 that we're kind of, at least a number of us are, are glad that it's gone and passed, at least we think it is. Uh, think about 2018, just for a moment, about uh, specifically some of the hard days you had. Let, let's call them in, insecure days this morning. And, and I want God to help bring to your mind this morning what insecurities that you faced in 2018. Insecurities that, that, that aroused this thing called fear in, inside of you to the surface. Times when you kind of felt insecure. Times when you felt unsafe in whatever was going on in your life. And, and they could include any number of the following. It could just be you felt lonely. And maybe this was the first year that some of you were alone because your spouse passed. And it was different. And there were certain fears in you that you haven't experienced before, and it made you feel somewhat more secure. It may have been health issues that you did not expect to come into your life, and they took over a great part of your life, and maybe even bringing them into the new year. It might be some financial issues. It might be relationship issues. Uh, maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe some of you went through a divorce. Maybe a relationship that you have with a friend just, just got the, 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 the better side of you, and it ruined months out of that year and weighed you down. It may have been a loss of a job. It may have been a loss of, of a dear family member. It may be boys and girls that somebody you met at school who wasn't very nice to you. And now you understand what it means that there's a bully at school and, and I get bullied sometimes. It may do, have to do with those of us who are getting closer to retirement beginning to wonder, will I have enough money to retire? And it makes you somewhat insecure with the thought of, well, maybe I won't, then what? Or what is life like now that I'm graduated from high school or graduated from college? All of a sudden, I face this thing called adulthood, and I don't see my near future, that path at least, as clear as I should. And it makes me feel somewhat insecure because mom and her dad or grandpa or grandma are kind of on my case. What you going to do now? And you know what? I really don't know. It was a whole lot safer when I could just, even though I didn't like it necessarily, I could just go to school and not have to think about all those things. But now I'm 18, now I'm 21, 22, and I graduated, and it's like, wow, what is the future going to hold? Insecurities make us feel insecure and unsafe. The Bible talks about a man who was after God's own heart. One, probably one of my favorite biblical characters by the name of David. Well, he wrote so much of this word, when, especially when it comes to the Psalms. He, he was a, a man of prayer. And he was a man, even though he was a, a powerful, great leader, man of God, he as well faced times and days where he felt insecure and where fear just gripped him. He had enemies, people on his case all the time, critics, 
He lost a child. Due to a sin in his life, his child, uh, God took away from him. He fought giants. He had a son that tr would try to take the throne from him by taking his life. He had family issues, family tensions throughout. Here was a man, even though he was a man after God's own heart, he too experienced a lot of insecurity. A and that surely sounds familiar to me, and I think it sounds familiar to you. And because not only is 2018 now passed, and you say, I'm glad it's behind me, my guess is a number of us are taking those same insecurities into the new year. It's the new year. Happy new year. Is this year going to be better than last? Or why should I, or why am I carrying some of the baggage and the weight from 2018 into 2019? Why do I want to continue to carry that kind of insecurity and fear in my life? Psalm 27, a powerful psalm that, that speaks about uh, the confidence that a believer is to have in God no matter what comes into your life. And, and I want you to claim this psalm as your psalm 2019. Put it on your refrigerator door, put it on your computer screen, on your phone, and whenever you're feeling insecure or unsafe or not sure of what tomorrow's going to bring because of what's just happened in your life, you turn to Psalm 27. Let me tell you, it'll get you through this year no matter what. And we're going to read that this morning. Page 795, a Bible in front of you underneath the chair, you'll find these words, this, this Psalm of David, a Psalm of this, this ultimate trust and confidence in God, even in the worst of times. And I know you're like me. <laughs> and I know you need these words as much as I need these words as I enter another year of what may come. Page 795. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his secret tent and set me high upon a rock. <clears throat> then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Now listen about his prayer life. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes or false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Four words of encouragement that I want to bring you this morning that are going to get you through this year. And if you put this psalm up on the fridge or by your bedside or on your phone or on your computer desktop, you've got to turn to this and run to this, and you'll be doing it a lot this year because we know what happens from year to year. Four encouraging words that we can receive from Psalm 27 that will help us to get through 2019 with this full assurance and feeling of being secure and safe in the Lord. First of all, I want to encourage you to enter 2019 with a renewed sense of confidence 
in God. Looking for my clicker. Did anybody, somebody take it? Here it is. Sometimes our boys, and, no, it's my fault. Entering 2019 fully confident in, in, God's, in God's presence in my life. Verses 1 through 3. Here, here's David sur surrounded with, with these problems in his life and right now facing enemies and foes and his critics. He was a strong leader, but like every strong leader, he had a heart that can often be broken. And that would come when he would face his enemies and his critics. And when that would happen, he says, listen, this is how I get through that when I have to go through a rough patch in my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. What am I going to be afraid of? What should I fear? I have nothing to fear because the Lord is my God and I have full confidence in his ability to walk with me, to be with me, and help me to feel safe and secure. Well, that's absolute confidence, even in the worst of times or circumstances, that I have a God who's going to be there for me. I wonder this morning, first of all, what level of confidence that you have in God as we begin this new year. You see, sometimes when we go through rough patches in our life, like maybe back in 2018, we give up on God sometimes because we wonder why God is allowing certain things to come into our life. Kind of picking that up from Pastor Laren last week when he, when he preached on Joseph and Providence. He said, God, if you're such a provider, how come I'm not being provided for right now? You've said those words to him I trust before. What level of confidence do you have as you enter this new year? Maybe you are already feeling insecure because of whatever's going on in your life. You've carried it over 2018. You've just gotten a health report, a financial report, uh, something in your life, something in your family, something in your marriage, something in relationships, something that's happening at school or in your work. And already you're feeling the weight of the burdens of living in this world and maybe even here this morning insecure, and even feelings of fear. David says, listen, as you enter 2019, do this first. Renew your confidence in God. Not self-confidence. Not, I'm going to get myself through whatever comes my way. You won't. I renew my confidence in God because I am safe and secure when I am in his arms. That's powerful. I encourage you to enter 2019 with a renewed sense of confidence. Repeat after me. I hereby resolve to enter 2019 with a renewed confidence in God. I will trust him no matter what I face. I also want to encourage you this morning to enter 2019 by doing what you're doing this morning. Making worship a priority. In verses 4 through 6, we hear David's testimony about when he felt the greatest amount of safety and security. Some of you may be surprised at this. It wasn't in his um, uh, emergency shelter that he built with a solid uh, the cement walls where all food is in there so if something happens he can run to that kind of what is that place called? Yeah, that kind of a place where you go when there's a disaster going on. No. When did he feel the most safe and secure in his life? Notice what he says. When I come into the presence of God verses 4 through 6 when I worship God he was at this point in his life not near the temple or around the temple unable to worship God like he always did. He says, now I'm away from the temple and what's going on in my life? I'm being threatened by my enemies. Oh, and he says, how I wish I could be back in the temple in the presence of God, worshiping with God's people. Why? Because when I do that, I feel so safe. I feel so secure when I am in the presence of God. That's why he says that this one thing I ask God for, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on his beauty. Because when I do that, that makes me feel really safe. When I'm away from the temple, when I miss the temple services, it makes me feel insecure. 
Think about it for a moment. How insecure did you feel in 2018? Another way to ask that question in regards to this is, how many times did you find yourself in this building here, in this room, worshiping with God and his people? How often, what kind of practice do you have? What kind of priority is this in your life? Let me tell you what I found in my life. And this usually happened because of my profession. I have, to be, I have to be here even though I want to be here. But sometimes I don't get sick a whole lot, but a few times in my life and I would get sick and I'd be like two to three weeks not here. Something happens in my life where I lose that sense of security and safety. And maybe you found that to be the case as well in 2018 because... I find for those who have a practice of coming, let's just say, every four to six weeks I kind of check in. I could assure you that, that those who might practice that kind of a worship habit, you're going to have a whole lot more insecurity in your life than what you need to have. See, there's something about being in the presence of God, which is when God meets with his people and we come together, God's special presence is with us. Those who come here on a regular basis can leave. Isn't it true when you leave on Sunday, it's like, wow, thank you, God, I could come into your presence and I can leave with a sense of security and safety because I'm in your presence and you're with me. You get out of his presence, you face much more insecurity. As we enter 2019, no matter what comes your way, because sometimes I, I, I find people, stay, when they have troubles come into their life, they start missing worship a lot, where just the opposite should be happening, right? I challenge you in 2019, if you want to feel safe and secure, even through the worst of times, you make worship a priority. No, I don't feel like coming today. I know what that feeling is like. I can't stay home. You know why? I don't feel like... But I find, as I hear from so many of you, you know, I didn't feel like coming today. But boy, that song we sang, that scripture that was read, that message that we heard, that hug that somebody gave me, right? I'm so glad I came. I feel so much more safe and secure in the arms of God when I'm in the worshiping community. Repeat after me, I hereby resolve to enter 2019 by making worship a priority. I also want to encourage you to enter 2019 by seeking God's face daily in prayer. One thing, David, we find about David, verses 7 through 12 is one good example. He had such a disciplined prayer life. God doesn't care when you decide to pray as a habit. But I have found the only way that I keep prayer a habit in my life is when I kind of do it the same time every day, even though you can pray while you're walking and pray while you're riding in the car. There's something about connecting with God on a regular basis, especially, do you see how important this is? When you wake up tomorrow and you get some bad news, whatever it might be, and you wonder how you're going to get through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year because of this unexpected thing, this unwelcome thing has come into your life, which is going to happen for most of us in 2019. How are you going to respond to that? Look what David does. Look how he prays. Hear me, he says. Answer me. Teach me. Lead me. David had this, this close conversation with God on a regular basis. He wrote so many of these prayers in the Psalms. That's why he was a man after God's own heart. He and God were like this, just like this. And no matter what came into his life, the good or the bad, he would pour his heart out to God in seeking God's face on a regular basis. No wonder he felt so safe and secure. He walked with God on a daily basis. And you and I can have this same kind of, of, of security and safety as we enter 2019. I don't know what your prayer life was like in 2018. You do. And I know what it's like when interruptions come into your life and life gets busy. That can be one of the spiritual disciplines that's easy to lay aside. 
and you'll say something like, well, I'll pray tomorrow. Or I'll pray next week. And you get busy, and you get busy, and you get busy, and your prayer life is kind of tanked. And again, you begin to wonder why. Boy, why don't I feel so safe and so secure right now in my life? Something's going on that, that's really getting me down, and I can't get out of it. My guess is it has something to do as well with your lack of connecting with God on a regular basis and seeking God and seeking his face on a regular basis. I want to say a daily basis. Because if you're not seeking God's face, as David calls it, in prayer on a regular basis, let me tell you something, just like when you begin missing worship a lot, same way with a prayer life. You neglect that, you're going to feel a whole lot more insecure. Isn't that true, Christians? Isn't that true? You feel a whole lot more insecure when you're disconnected from God. Seek God's face in prayer on a regular basis. What does Peter say? Does anybody have 1 Peter 5 verse 8 to memory? Cast all your care upon him because what? He cares for you. I knew you had that all memorized. You just don't always know where it's from. Cast every care and worry that you have upon you. Cast everything that makes you feel insecure and unsafe before him. Don't wait till the weekend. Don't wait for Sunday to come. Guess what? Besides worshiping every day, you can pray every day. And you say, here it is, God. David in Psalm 27 is casting his cares before the Lord. I'm afraid. I'm feeling insecure. God, help me. Answer me. Hear me. Lead me. Teach me. Do you pray like that? That kind of personal connection with God. It's needed. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8. Who has that? Do not be anxious about anything, right? But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, what? Present your request to God, and the God of peace will, that transcends all understanding will what? Guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Powerful verses. Some of you, that's, those are your favorite verses in Scripture. But it's a reminder. There's no reason to go on feeling insecure and unsafe in your life as long as you're bringing that anxiety and that depression and those cares and that worry to, the, to God. Get them off of your chest. You don't have to carry them. That's what conversing is God is all about. Repeat after me. I hereby resolve to enter 2019 by seeking God's face daily in prayer. Finally, one last word of encouragement as you enter 2019 is having the full assurance now hear this very clearly have the absolute full assurance that you will see the goodness of God in your life throughout the, every day and every minute of this year as you patiently learn to wait upon him, no matter what kind of news or circumstances comes into your life. David's testimony in verses 13 through 14, is, it's just, he ends the psalm the same way he began it. Verses 1 through 3 talk about the absolute confidence he had in a God who was there for him when he was in fear. Now he comes back to that same theme. At the end, he kind of, you know, Begins it and ends it with the same. I have this full confidence of God that he's going to be there for me when I need him. And I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now think about David's life. I had a child that the Lord took away from me. I'm running from this man by the name of King Saul. My life was in constant danger. I'm, I'm running and fighting against my enemies. I have a son that's trying to take my throne away and he wants me dead. I, I have a daughter who was raped by one of my sons. David's life wasn't a walk in the park. But he says, you know what, through it all? I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's there. Even when life isn't going so well for you. There's the goodness of God that is at work. And how is going to God take what's just happened, which is maybe the worst news you've ever received, how is God going to take that and yet in that, you would still see the goodness of God in your life. I think Pastor Laren talked about last week, didn't he talk about kind of seeing the goodness of God? God is good all the time, all the time God is good, he had in his message. Same thing. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That was David's testimony. And, and if you wait upon him patiently, 
He can get you through. I, I wonder, is this your personal testimony? What do you find yourself doing? How do you respond when things aren't going so well your way? Are, are you quick to complain? Are, are you quick to criticize? I, uh, it's not that you can't cry out to God and say, and why and how come? You, you may ask the questions, but how do you respond when, when, when life no longer is a bowl of cherries? I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God, be true to your word and be true to me in that way. Help me not to take matters into my own hand. Let me know that you have my life in your hands and help me to wait patiently upon you. Did you do that in 2018? Well, none, none, none of us make it completely 100% in this way. But I do have a greater sense of urgency and desire that now that I enter a new year in 2019, I'm going to expect to see the goodness of the Lord in my life and I'm going to watch for it. Even when I get that not so nice phone call, I'm going to say, okay, God, show me your goodness in my life. I want to experience it right now, even through this not so good time in my life. That no matter what comes into my life in 2019, I will see your goodness as long as I wait upon you and not try to take matters into my own hands. You're going to see the goodness of God in your life this year. Even if it's the worst year you've ever had. You will see the goodness of God in your life as long as you learn to wait upon him and his timing, not your own. God forbid we try to take our lives into our own hands in an effort to try to have goodness come into our life. It doesn't work that way. Repeat after me. I hereby resolve to enter 2019 expecting to experience the goodness of God in my life. I will patiently wait upon him. So welcome to 2019 and welcome it with open arms. Live with God confidence. If you can't fit Psalm 27 on your refrigerator door, if you got one of these little mini refrigerators, then put this quote up there. This 2019, this is my motto. Live with God confidence. Because you're going to need it. You're going to wake up some morning, go to bed some night. It wasn't a good day. It wasn't a good experience. Not so good things are coming into your life. Live with God confidence. I, I, I can't control it. I don't like it. I wish it wasn't here, but it is. We live in a fallen world. I'm going to live with God confidence. And then say, oh, Psalm 27. I got to go back to Psalm 27. I got to go back to it again. You just have to keep going back to it again and again and again. I want you to think about today where you're insecure or afraid and commit to trusting God right there and right now. Before you leave this place this morning, you humble yourself before God, do it while the elements are being passed. You say a little prayer between you and God saying, Lord, I, I commit Whatever I'm feeling right now, whatever comes into my life this year, whatever insecurity, I'm committing that to you, and I'm going to trust you. That's another word for confidence. I am going to show you, and I'm going to show others that I have complete and absolute confidence in you, and that I will see the goodness of God in my life in 2019. Father, we thank you for your word. Boy, did we need to hear it. Because even though six or seven days have only passed in this new year, there are a number of us who already faced things we were not expecting. But oh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we can, we can face anything that you allow to come into our lives. Oh, forgive us when, when we try to take matters into our own hands. Forgive us when we complain and, and get angry at, at others when our life isn't going so well. Help us to more and more turn the corner of, of, from self-confidence to God-confidence. Take away. Whenever insecurity and fears come into our life, take away that fear. Help us to be less afraid and, and more confident in, in a God who we can trust in. A God who holds us in his hands. A God that we, who's in whose arms we just need to lean on and we can get up in the morning and go to bed at night feeling safe 
and secure. No matter what the night, no matter what the day, no matter what the year may bring. In Jesus' name, everyone say, amen.